So let me start off with the conceptual questions. These are the uh, things I started doing actually last year. So if you look at the playlist that I've linked to before, um, there's a version of me doing these exact questions, not with the perplexity, but with the, the free version of ChatGPT. So the, what I'm hoping to see as we go through this is, um, you know, how, how much better is it? And I don't remember with these questions how well ChatGPT did. ChatGPT might have done fairly well also. So, um, so anyways, um, so let me just copy and paste one at a time and I will look at the perplexity response and I'll critique it. Um, and um, again, as a reminder, if we are using uh, any generative AI as you are doing, so homework is where outside help is a lot. It, what I do uh, requires that what you submit reflect to your work. So, you know, outside the sources, there's a way you can cite it so that um, you can kind of see what comes from, uh, so the other people looking at it can see what comes from you and what comes from the outside the source. And the, um, Think a purple X that lets you create a link that you can share, which is another way to cite it. Um, in addition to the, the discussion forum we had in week one. Anyways, so let me copy and paste the first question. And let's see what it says. What makes the image formed by a play mirror virtual? I hope it explains what a virtual image is. Something about um, the light rays just appearing to come from somewhere, not actually converging in a place. Important to do it how interpret these reflections, right? Include, yeah, this is kind of um, um, how, how do you say it? Uh, circular. You can say, oh, it's a characteristic of the image to be virtual. Like, so why is it virtual? You have to explain it. It's the virtual information. Why is it so long? Um, this is this is way too long of an answer, as you'll see in the model answer. Um, actually, convert. Yeah, that's important. If like the off, then of the image appear to yeah emanating point up behind yeah so I think it, it's kind of too long but it's saying the right things in that long answer uh, yeah all these are unnecessary I don't think I wasn't even asking uh, what makes the images formed by plain mirror virtual yeah so uh, so let me try this because this is so long um, do not yeah. Yeah, and these figures are actually good. Object, it's showing the these rays, outgoing diverging rays, appear to come from this point where, um, but they don't actually converge there, but they appear to converge there. Um, and this one isn't all that good because these rays are not shown as diverging. Um, this, that image somehow looks familiar. I wonder where that comes from. Um, that might be coming from a text book that I remember seeing. <laughs> I don't know which one. Uh, yeah, anyways, so let, because it's so long, uh, let me do this. Um, could you summarize that in one short paragraph? Because that one was just so long. Uh, uh, virtual image. Formation by a plane mirror. Yeah, it didn't summarize well. Um, and this is the kind of the thing that generative AI sometimes does not so well. Um, so, you know, in this long answer, um, you can find the stuff that's correct, you know, the, like a... Um, this is the key sentence here. And um, to someone who actually understands the important point about virtual image information, when asked to summarize it into one paragraph, you would uh, be sure to include it, not just have this paragraph because there was just a fluffy intro. So I don't know how to, where to put this response, whether it's good, bad. Um, neutral, where the long answer was good. So if you are reading through that long answer and kind of that's helping you study, great. That's one good way to use generative AI. But if you're copying and pasting a two-page thing, then that becomes super obvious that you are not using your own brain. And um, 
I, you know, I think I've seen good summaries by generative AI, but uh, this particular summary wasn't a good summary. So, anyways, all right. Uh, following series of questions, let's see how it breaks it up. Ideally, it gives one paragraph each. Uh, main topic or subject: um, geometric optics. So, can you see a virtual image? Yes. Can you photograph a virtual image? This question is actually ambiguous. Um, uh, I guess one short answer is yes. <laughs> uh, uh, now this one is not ambiguous. You cannot you cannot project a virtual image onto a screen because um, you do need a real image at the location of the screen, and you can't have that with a virtual image. And is it necessary to project? Or, uh, the answer is no. You can actually just see a real image. Um, so let's see. I think ChatGPT missed this one last time I asked this question. So let's see. A, you can see a virtual image. Yeah, virtual image is formed. Our eyes interpret. Yeah, I think the. Well, this is good enough of a. The explanation, I think, in the same way the other summary explanation was deficient. And this is also. Uh, yeah. It's good enough. I think I'm just being nitpicky. Uh, if I saw this uh, in your answer, I don't think I would have, uh, other than I just saw it in perplexity answer, I would have uh, raised an issue with that. So yes, you can photograph a virtual image. I wonder if uh, cameras work similar to our eyes. Okay, and then you take a photograph, virtual image, in order to form a real image onto the camera sensor. Yeah, that's uh, the one interpretation you can take and say, yeah, yeah you can photograph it the same way you can see it. Um, the other interpretation that would be defensible is if you are talking about, uh, so by photograph, do you mean if a virtual image is at the location of the film or CCD sensor, would that form an image? The answer there is no. You need a real image at the location of the sensor. And the camera optics do that. So this is a good answer within a particular interpretation. Uh, can you project a virtual image? No. Yeah. Uh, because you need a real image there. Um, right, physically converge, yeah, characteristic of a real image. The, oh, uh, yeah, this is a good answer. You don't need to project, you can just see it. Yeah, okay, they can be seen without a screen. The main thing you need to make sure you do is you have to be in a kind of path of the beam. So if you are trying to see the real image from the side, uh, you know, that won't work because you need something to diffusely reflect if you're gonna do that. Um, but, you know, as long as you put yourself in the path of the beam, you can just see the real image. I think there will be one lab. It might be, uh, I think next week's lab, you will actually see that. Uh, you will set up the lenses and you can look through the lenses to see the real image. Well, real and virtual image. Uh, yeah. yeah, this diagram is just, um, I have no idea what this is. That's just a nonsense diagram. <laughs> This um, these have nothing to do with the questions I'm asking. I, I don't know why these are cited. Um, so other than those weird images at the end, good answers. Um, let's uh, look at next question. Sphere collaboration. Yeah, so it would uh, um, have to explain that. It's the uh, error that comes from making mirrors as a sphere rather than parabola. Does not focus yet yeah, all parallel rays. A single point. Yeah, does it matter, ma mention parabola? Uh, more pronounced. Um, yeah, use parabolic mirrors. Yeah, the parabolic shape is the right geometry for um, focusing all the rays into a single point. So it especially matters if you. Have um, well, I have a photo that I used in a couple of different places. Uh, like a, when you have a large short to focal uh, length l lens, um, it would be made into parabolic shape if you want a high quality image right to the edge of the lens. Um, most uh, like uh, you know magnifying glass, you can kind of see when you look through it uh, at a distance. In the center, you get good image, and but it get like distorted towards the edge. Uh, it, the super collaboration in a mirror is basically the same effect. Um, use of corrector plate, sure. Um, uh, now this is getting way too technical. So if I see answer like this, then I'll get suspicious. Like, we didn't cover this in class. Where is this coming from? Why do you think this is important? 
anyway as for lenses uh oh so i guess this is kind of similar as that um stopping yeah so if you if you use like a like a small center part of the lens or the mirror that'll help because the spherical aberration becomes more serious towards the uh, farther edges of the uh, thing so this is actually one good way that um I might not have mentioned this in the model answer. That's possible. That uh, it has to do with the, the phrase that I um, don't think it's mentioned the paraxial. So uh, could you explain what paraxial rays are? I might have mentioned the phrase paraxial rays in the model answer. It's basically uh, the rays in the, that uh, where spherical aberration is uh, negligible. Um, but the rays that are not so paraxial, um, that's where you need a uh, parabolic shape in order to avoid the serious uh, distortions. So proximity to and small angle with the optical axis. Yeah, that's it. Um, yeah. yeah, let me know. Well, why the answer is getting so long? Um, but yeah, you can read it on your own. Uh, so let me pause briefly. You can read it on your own if you want. Uh, skip ahead. Uh, I just wanted some mention of paraxial rays. Um, all right. So the answer you gave was good. Uh, let's uh, go to question number four. Um, you can argue that a flat piece, yeah, infinite focal length. It forms an image, um, well, at the same location as the object. But it won't be like a di is equal to do. You have because of the sign convention we use, they'll have opposite sign, but same distance. Mm. Geometric optics, I think. I forget if a ChatGPT got this right. It might have gotten it wrong. It's a kind of an odd question to ask. And we don't need paper length because would not converge or diverge. Yeah, good. Uh, yeah, yeah. You th using thin lens formula is definitely one way to do it. Or sorry, thin lens formula, lens equation, U lens equation. <laughs> this formula <laughs> um, where, yeah. Then you get di is negative di. Oh, yeah, yeah. Equal magnitude of a side. Constant behavior image appears to be the same distance behind the glass. So actually same physical location as the object. Uh, oh, but this is wrong. Um, the image from this is definitely virtual. Because uh, the, the, any kind of converging that's done, that's done, uh, you know, before the optical element. It, it, it's, uh, okay, there. It could have just omitted the last paragraph and it would be fine because I didn't ask if it's real or virtual. And it's a, it's a virtual. And the way you know it's a virtual is your DI is negative. Negative image distance means virtual image. It's like this is, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is just confusing. What's the source for this? Uh, yeah, it's some online forum. And this is frankly why um, I don't... Um, this is one of the reasons that I would recommend you against the, from using outside the sources, because um, because it's something that I haven't. Um, let me see, traditional sense. Let me search for traditional. Trad Maybe it's not coming from here. Um, so let's see, phenomenon of image appearing. More. That's not anything about what it's. Yeah, this uh, um, particular citation doesn't have anything to do with uh, what this paragraph is saying. Um, so I don't know where that particular paragraph is coming from, but it's it's just wrong. Um, so um, the answer, the whole thing taken as a whole, wrong answer. Because if it's partly wrong, then it's wrong. <laughs> but uh, first and second paragraphs, these were good. Um, the last one. It's, you know, sometimes people try to sound smart by com overcomplicating things. And Chat GPT has a tendency to do that, uh, which is where some of its hallucinations come from. Um, yeah. All right. 
compare him fold by him reflection with the refraction uh, 3d uh, okay image location where versus sure all of them <laughs> um, one good thing to mention would be something about the uh, chromatic aberration that's uh, something that uh, images formed by reflection would never suffer from um, and then it's you know, this is one of those open-ended questions to which there is a closed list of correct answers. So let's see. This question is in the location. Um, located. Yeah. yeah, it's a really specific circumstance. You can form image in front of the mirror, a real image, uh, using a convex mirror. So uh, this is a really weirdly specific thing uh, yeah yeah image okay can vary significantly uh, refraction uh, converging lens can form on the same side as uh, yeah or the opposite side yeah I, I don't know if this is comparing or contrasting with anything but okay um collection yeah so this is i guess comparison where's the contrast uh, I th asked for one feature in each category of podcast. Uh, yeah, this is, I believe, wrong statement. Images formed by reflection are not laterally inverted. It's, I mean, you might think they are, um, but the way it's inverted is actually, uh, you know, one particular axis has been inverted. And I, the way I think uh, most times people think it's uh, inverted the left to right instead of top down, it's uh, more of a psychological thing than anything else. Uh, this statement, I think, is wrong. They're yeah, not always literally inverted. It's, <laughs> they, they just, uh, one axis has undergone inversion. That's all it is. Um, the size of, uh, yeah. So I'm surprised it doesn't mention chromatic aberration. So in this long answer, it never mentioned the chromatic aberration. Uh, um, what about chromatic aberration? Yeah. I wonder if we'll get the context from above or just to go on to its own explanation about chromatic aberration. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Um, you know, I, I guess, uh, you know, I, I'm in an open-ended question. I'm looking for one specific thing, which in some sense isn't fair. So, but uh, I, I, these long answers do bother me a bit, but uh, it's fine. Why isn't there a mention of using a mirror? Because if you use a mirror, then there's no chromatic aberration. It's... Yeah, never mind. Uh, you know, if you want a response that sounds like it comes from deep understanding, generative AI isn't your go-to. Um, let, let me just do this one last thing. Can't you just use mirror optics? <laughs> yeah, okay. I think it's getting the context at least. Yeah, it's like... <laughs> I mean, that's why um, in astronomy, uh, at some point, one of the reasons, uh, in, well, at some point it's uh, better to use um, reflection-based telescope than lens-based telescope. So, it's, I don't know why it took so many back and forth. To get to. And it's still giving me like a whole essay. Uh, it's, uh, all right, let me get to the last question and then we can call this portion of the session to an end. Uh, why is vision blurry? Uh, yeah, so it has to do with um, difference in the index of refraction right outside of your eye. Um, the kind of the your lens of your eye, um, you know, it, it it works well when the immediately outside that is air. So when you have water with an index of refraction of one point three three, um, the focal length is too long uh, to form an image on your um, on your retina. It becomes blurry because it yeah, has refractive properties adapted to yeah to that because we live in air not water um, yeah. 
Help, yeah, layer of air. I think this actually is better than some of the other bad answers I've seen. I've seen people answer this based on something about the curved surface of the goggle, which is total nonsense. Um, so, so this is good, uh, I think. Yeah, yeah, no mention of curved surface of the goggles. Yeah, okay. That's good. Uh, so, you know, most answers. Uh, so this one was actually a good answer. So if I'm grading uh, perplexity sensor on two criteria, correctness and uh, succinctness, because, you know, you can always have some element that's correct by throwing everything at the wall. Have a 10-page response, and let's maybe one paragraph there will actually get at what I'm looking for. So if I'm grading on those two criteria, then... Did well on question six. I think it did okay on question four if I ignore its last paragraph. Um, did okay here, kind of long, but maybe okay. Um, I think it did mostly okay. It's here where uh, I thought it was just over long and it was missing something. And in the question one, it was where also when I made it condense it, it didn't condense correctly, in my opinion. But um, again, if you are using this like a search engine, like something that helps you learn, then, uh, then you know, I, I have no objection to that. Just make sure that you are reading through the responses and that this is helping you learn physics rather than helping you cut corners.